As we mentioned in class yesterday, there are two types of reproduction. So I'm going to give you the nuts and bolts of reproduction and see if we can get through this really quickly so we get back to class, we can do the activities, and then we can have a better understanding of what's going on. So our two types of reproduction we mentioned before, we have asexual reproduction, the cell is going to split, and then of course we have sexual reproduction, where sperm and egg are going to meet. Let's first take a look at asexual reproduction, where the cell simply splits. To help you understand asexual reproduction, we're going to simplify things a great deal. Just remember three things. Duplication, alignment, and separation. D-A-S. Well, if we're going to go through this process of duplication, alignment, and separation, what is the most important thing we must duplicate? The most important thing is DNA, the information. So we're going to duplicate the information. We duplicate DNA, then, you guessed it, we're going to align the DNA. And then finally, we're going to move the DNA to opposite ends of the cell. It's really as simple as that. Kind of. Let's look first at duplication. So when we did this before, we called this replication. So let's revisit the idea of replication and then go from there. You'll recall in DNA replication, we have our double helix, which is going to unzip and expose the bases on the inside. And now we have our nucleotides coming into complementary base pair with each strand, A with T, G with C. So I end up with a new DNA molecule. We have the old strand bonded to a new strand on this side, and then an old strand here bonded to a new strand on this side. So we made a copy of our DNA. Now our DNA at this point is in the form of chromosomes. We mentioned these before. These are packets of DNA. But let's review some terms. So we look at then our base pairs being bonded together in our DNA molecule. We have a sequence of bases here that we know code for a protein. Let's call it a gene. Think one gene, one protein. So your genes then are going to dictate characteristics about you. If we take this DNA then and wrap it up, coil it up, wrap it around these proteins, we're going to end up with a chromosome, a packet of DNA. So chromosomes are just DNA all wrapped up. It's almost as if I take this rubber band, stretch really, really tight, it looks pretty thin. But if I let it condense and come together and then begin to coil it up, you can now see it a lot better. So this coiled rubber band then represents the chromosome. Probably not the best example, let's take a look at a video. So here's our double helix, the base is on the inside. You have these rungs of the ladder here. Now I'm gonna run the motion here, you can see the DNA coiling up on itself. It continues to coil. These pieces here are proteins. The DNA is going to coil around. I'll speed this up. So it continues to coil and coil. More coiling, more condensing, more coiling, more condensing, until finally we end up with our chromosome. So that's a chromosome, and depending on what organism you have, you have different numbers of chromosomes. And these things for a eukaryotic cell are located in the nucleus. We see then the nucleus here containing all of the chromosomes, and all together, all the chromosomes together, all the DNA information for an organism is known as our genome. Well, let's look at a cell going through this process of asexual reproduction, which we actually call mitosis, and then we'll go into more detail. So here we see the cell going through mitosis, going through this cell division, and we've already had a duplication of the genetic material. Now we can see this genetic material, these chromosomes getting lined up in the middle of the cell. We call this alignment. And then finally, we're going to have these chromosomes, the genetic material is going to separate, move to opposite ends of the cell. There they go. So once again, duplication has already occurred, alignment, separation, duplication, alignment, separation, duplication, alignment, and then separation.
Okay, let's add some more details. So here we're looking at a cell, and this cell has four chromosomes. So here's our nuclear membrane inside the nucleus, then we have our four chromosomes. So the first step, of course, is duplication. So duplication occurs, and here's where we end up with something that looks like this. So these look like little X's, but what they really are are the following. So I've got a chromosome here, and its duplicate is attached on this side. Where they are attached, we call that the central mirror. And now, together, all of this is known as sister chromatids. So once again, I have a chromosome. There's one chromosome. We made an exact copy of it. We went through DNA replication. So here's the exact copy of that chromosome. And they're connected once again at what we call the central mirror. Now at this point, we go from duplication to alignment. The nuclear membrane begins to break down. And now the genetic material, the chromosomes, are going to align in the middle of the cell. Notice how these chromosomes line up. We're lined up end to end. So each of the chromosomes, the sister chromatids, I should say, the sister chromatids are lined up end to end. And we have these spindle fibers as well connecting to our central mirror of each of the sister chromatids. So this is once again the alignment, where they line up in the middle of the cell. After alignment then comes separation. And separation just means that I'll separate my sister chromatids. So the spindle fibers actually pull these apart and we have then the chromosomes move to one end of the cell and the exact duplicates of each one of these chromosomes move to the opposite end of the cell. We then divide up our cytoplasm, reform our nuclear membrane, and in the end we end up with two new cells that are exact copies of each other. I started with four chromosomes, I end up with four chromosomes and two new cells. So we have two cells that are duplicates, exact copies of each other. All right, adding some more detail to this process. Uh, these two new cells gone through mitosis, produced through mitosis, are known as the daughter cells. So I have the parent cell, which then gives rise to, in mitosis, two daughter cells. One more thing, these chromosomes, I have four chromosomes in this particular organism. You and your body have 46 chromosomes. How many pairs do I have here? Well, obviously just two pairs. You have 23 pairs. We call these pairs a special name. These are known as homologous pairs. They're homologous because there is something the same, homo means the same, there's something the same on each of these chromosomes. As it turns out, they carry the same trait. So for example, you have a tongue rolling trait. Either you can roll your tongue or you can't roll your tongue. So on one chromosome, you may it may say that yes, you can roll your tongue. On another chromosome, the homologous pair, it may say you can't roll your tongue. So while one says you can, the other says you can't, there are different versions of this trait, but it is the same trait, it's the tongue rolling trait. And that's what we find on homologous pairs of chromosomes, the same trait. So that's mitosis, it's a pretty simple process, just asexual reproduction, the cell is gonna split. I form two new cells, each are exact copies of each other. The next video is going to take you into meiosis.